We continue this uh, conversation with some analysis as the elective contest for leadership of the African National Congress in the Ekuruleni region went underway in Johannesburg despite the several unresolved complaints lodged with Lutuli House. Five branches had lodged several grievances ranging from being barred from registration and lockouts to poor communication. In the contest, Ekuruleni Regional Chairperson Nzondile Masina is being challenged by Dr. Gagaza. Political analyst Sandy Leswana joins us now to evaluate the state of affairs in the ruling party. Very good evening to you. Thank you so much for your time. Just listening into some of the remarks that are being made by the current Ekuruleni Regional Chair, Mzondile Masina, speaking about uh, some of the achievements that they have made, speaking to the admin um, strengthening, and of course, uh, pointing out what sets them apart. What are you making of his um, reaction and response because his job is, is under threat here? Yes, um, you will remember that Masina uh, came in and was leading a coalition. The ANC already was in coalition. It had lost support uh, in Eguruleni and he came in under a coalition. And then he lost power altogether afterwards uh, in the 20, in the November, one November 2021 election. Now, he says that uh, the ANC has been a better provider to informal settlements and so on and so forth, the black majority, if you like. But what is interesting is that since 2011, the ANC has been consistently losing the majority vote in Gauteng, which is the black vote, to be totally honest. Mm -hmm. So for them to claim to be accurate and, and more qualified representative of the black majority in Gauteng and the Teguruleni is not supported by the tally of votes under the IEC. For instance, in the last election in 2021 and the previous one in 2016, his job is at risk, and if you were a sober-minded member of the ANC, you would not support Masina because he lost power. He lost power. The power was lost under him. He did not recover the position of 2016. Instead, he lost it. In fact, as you speak about um, the coalition, we, we heard Gauteng Premier David Makura also speaking uh, this afternoon saying uh, and expressing his concerns around the fragile state of the coalition, saying that as he calls for uh, a certain caliber of leadership, he is concerned about the um, structure and, and how fragile the coalition is. Um, you know, the ANC is out of the business of running metros, first of all. And they've been running a, a certain Leguruleni under a, a coalition in any event. Coalitions, the ANC from day one uh, uh, was establishing coalitions, even under Mandela, by the way. Mm -hmm. So the issue of coalition is not old, it's not new, it is old. Now, uh, to say the coalition in Leguruleni is weak, this, that, and the other, is also a problem because part of the problem that they have, the ANC, is that the other political parties, their own colleagues, politicians, don't want to partner with them because they, they are, their reputation as poor, corrupt, poor performers is well established. So no matter what comment they give about a weak coalition here and a weak coalition over there, it's not working. Even in Deben, it's not working. So, the, so they are not totally unqualified. They are not qualified to comment on the strength or weakness of any coalition. Among the, the other issues that we saw coming to the forefront was uh, one of the branches had accused Regional Secretary Tembingosi Niza of now manipulating branch qualification guidelines to exclude the others from the conference. And, but on his end, he insisted that there was nothing untoward about how he handled the matter and said that all processes were done according to the party's prescribed guidelines. What's your take on the, the, the internal administration, so to speak, because we've seen a lot of finger-pointing. Yes, uh, you will remember that from 2017, in fact, in the build-up of the CR17 campaign, one of the things that Sir Ramaphosa promised, and, and the ANC seemed to be promising themselves, uh, themselves, this is an internal ANC matter, it doesn't affect all South Africans, 
uh, that they are going to renew their systems. In other words, the administrative systems to know who is a valid member, what is a valid branch, etc., etc. That is in 2017. We are in 2022 now. Those problems have not been solved. There are problems of solving the purchasing of votes, the purchasing of elections and, and, and bribery and corruption in these things is continuing. For instance, we hear that in Eguruleni, branches were verified when delegates come to register for the conference. They are disallowed from verified branches that were successfully verified. So we also know that when you are a secretary general of a particular branch or whatever the case is, you are well placed to actually manipulate elections in favor of your favorite candidate. If it is Mzwandi Lemasena, Mzwandi Lemasena has got to make sure that the secretary is in his pocket to manipulate who votes and who doesn't vote. Now, the ANC's regional conference in Ekuruleni has been marred, of course, as you make mention, by a lot of trouble, stifled, delays, disputes, and paths leading to most of the ANC conferences have really been turbulent. Did we see Ekuruleni panning out as it's panning out? Yes, actually, you know, um, as the ANC loses power, and if you listen to, to Mzwandile Masina earlier on, mm -hmm. the, he was basically saying that they need to be more focused on reorganizing themselves in order to be fit enough to take up, to form a new coalition, to take power from the current coalition, etc., etc. Uh, so meaning that the life, the economic life, the quality of life of ANC leaders and ANC members in Eguruloni has deteriorated since they don't have access to the tenders and, and the jobs in the municipality and all those economic and financial flows are not there. So uh, as they have lost the metros, the situation in the ANC is desperate because they are financially desperate at a personal level and at an organizational level. So you are going to see more and more chaos as everybody thinks that they can actually uh, be able to regain power from the other coalitions that are co competing with them at this point in time, or that have taken them out of power in fact. With the precedent set, so to speak, we also know that the Kauteng Conference is set to take place in June. What can we expect? Um, it's going to be as tough as these other difficult uh, regional conferences. Very, very tough because Makura, the likes of Makura and his comrades who have been in power, um, uh, certainly after the Pulukwane conference, the performance has been decidedly poor. It has been disappointingly poor. I mean, it, there's nothing to compare it to. The failure of Makura and company in Gauteng uh, is, is devastating. Not to say that there is any identifiable substitute for them who is known for good performance. And I'm including Panyazali Sufi in that mediocrity. That has been a consistent trademark of the African National Congress in Gauteng. But they are going to be competing not to improve service delivery, but to see what they can do to hold on to power, which is clearly slipping out of their hands if the uh, trend of elections since 2011 is anything to go by. Mm. Thank you so much uh, for weighing in on this discussion. Political analyst Sandy Leswana, who is also an ICT entrepreneur and part-time lecturer at the Wits Business School's Municipal Finance Program, speaking to the state of Ekurleni.